Welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how to create a spectral separability plot in ArcGIS Pro. So first let's learn a little bit about what is a spectral separability plot. These are often used during classification. Classification is a process where we're usually taking a multi-band raster that has a bunch of pixels but also has five or more different bands and our goal is to put each of these pixels into a class. So we're going to convert the multi-band raster into an actually categorized uh, classified map. In this case, this might be W for water, F for forest, and so on. So in order to do this, what we essentially do is extract uh, the pixel values for each pixel. And so in a five-band raster, that would actually be five values for each pixel. And then we compare these pixels mathematically uh, and group them based on their mathematical similarity. So that's what classification is. And uh, of course, spectral separability is, val is valuable because what we really want to assess is, um, is it even possible to assign these pixels into different categories? And let's look at an example of this. This is a map of uh, Yellowstone National Park, excuse me, an image of Yellowstone National Park after the wildfires of 1988. And suppose we're trying to classify this into five classes, uh, water, meadow, rock, burned trees, and unburned trees. So we can see that each of these classes has kind of different colors and so we expect those pixels are going to have different values and perhaps we're going to be able to put them into different user classes but to kind of assess whether or not that's possible and, and which classes might be the most challenging we're going to make a spectral separability plot so how does that work the first thing we need to do is actually basically draw polygons on our image and extract out the the range of pixel values for that user class. So in this case, we drew a polygon on the burned areas. And here's what the distribution of pixel values looks like. It's a wide, very spread out uh, distribution with a high variance or a high standard deviation. The reason is because those burned areas look like this. They have a bit of black burned, a bit of green unburned, a bit of orange partially burned. So there's a big variation in those pixel values. If we look at another class, in this case, bedrock, uh, so we've got our bedrock polygon here, those pixel values define a much tighter spread with a lower standard deviation. And that's because uh, they're all basically gray. Here's an example of uh, this rhyolite lava flow in Yellowstone National Park. Just doesn't have that much spectral variability. The pixel values are fairly tightly grouped for this user class. So what we do is we've drawn these polygons and we've actually extracted the pixel values from each of these training polygons. And uh, in this case we had actually a seven band raster and so we have a plot here of uh, seven spectral bands along the x-axis and we have five lines, one for each user class water, trees, meadow, burned area, and bedrock. And so each uh, data point represents the mean of all the pixel values from the, from the training polygon for this particular user class. All right, so this is bedrock, band three, and the average uh, pixel value was 40 for all the pixels in the bedrock training polygon in band three. Okay, if we move to band four, the average of those pixels was 62. Band five, the average of those pixels was 105. And then of course we have our error bars, which in this case are standard deviation. So this is what a spectral separability plot is. Um, and what it really tells us is whether or not two user classes are going to be separable and which bands are going to be the most helpful. So in this example, band two over here, you can see that all of the user classes look very similar in band two. It's not going to be that helpful in separating out the classes. 
Here in band four, we get quite a bit more spread. Meadow sits way up here, bedrock sits way down here. So this is going to be pretty helpful in terms of separating our pixels into user classes. And uh, the final point I'll make here is just notice here we can clearly see that burned area has that higher standard deviation relative to the bedrock as we just talked about in the previous slide. Okay, so that's what a spectral separability plot is. Let's go ahead and show you how to make that in ArcGIS Pro. So we have a project open. In this case, we're working on classifying uh, a, ma a map of the Crown Point State Historic Site in New York. Here's what that looks like in true color. And we're gonna be going after classes like water, mature vegetation, scrub brush, uh, a little bit of bedrock here, and uh, a couple others. So there are a few different ways to extract a spectral plot, and we're going to basically do them in the order of increasing complexity. So we'll do the simple one first. Uh, before I do that, I want to mention the uh, we're actually going to be extracting our spectral data from a stacked raster that we made. The first four bands are band ratios, next two bands are NDVI and NDWI, and the last band is a canopy height. So it's a seven band stack with uh, various <clears throat> layers, excuse me. Okay, so the fastest and simplest way to make a spectral separability plot is just highlight the raster that you want to extract your spectra from. Go up to data under raster layer and create chart. Under create chart, choose spectral profile. This is going to bring up this uh, chart properties box. And the first thing I'm going to do is left click and hold so I can pin this over here to the side, get that kind of in a manageable way. And I'm going to shrink down the attribute table. Okay, so uh, this is very quick. You can basically choose any of these tools and get a spectral profile, or get kind of a user class. In this case, I'm going to just sketch a polygon over water really quickly, double click to finish it. And uh, right away, I've got my water class here. Then I'll do another one over mature forest. And uh, you can see it's already building my spectral profile down here. Uh, you can change the color just by clicking here. I found I'm not able to change the labels. And uh, so you can basically just do this and then you can export it down here using uh, either as a graphic or as a table if you want to open up the data in Excel. So that is the fastest way to just make a quick spectral profile. Uh, but now I want to show you a little bit more complicated way to do this. And let's say that you already have uh, a shape file that has a bunch of training polygons drawn in it. So we're going to actually just close this. And that is actually what we do have. We have this shape file called CP training. Uh, we have a bunch of features. And we actually have multiple features for each user class. So if you open the attribute table, we can see that, uh, for example, we have three features that delineate water. One, two, three. And we may want to extract a spectral signature for uh, the water user class and actually use all three of these together. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do next. And the way to do this is to go to uh, imagery. And again, we have to be uh, highlighting the image, the raster that we want to extract a profile from. So highlight that, go to imagery, classification tools, and training samples manager. Okay, so that's going to pop up a window over here. And the next thing we need to do is uh, basically define what's called a schema. And this is where we're going to do that. And uh, a schema is basically a list of user classes. It's really just a list of user classes. In this case, it's opened up a default, which is from the National Land Cover Database. So let's assume we don't want this. Uh, or if you want to modify this, you can just remove 
these classes very easily just using the X tool. Or in this case, we've actually, uh, and of course, if you remove them all, you can just generate your own. So um, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is uh, we've actually already made a schema. And let's see if this will work. We can generate the schema from our training samples. So I'm going to click there and I'm going to go find that shape file that I just showed you where we had all of our training polygons already drawn. CP training 2. Load that in. Not going to save the current one. There, for whatever reason, there's a glitch where even though I go to open this, it keeps just kicking me back to the default. Um, so <laughs> uh, in a previous video on supervised classification, we had already created a schema using this shape file. So I'm just going to actually go open that schema and browse to a schema. The schema files are noted by .ecs. And I'm going to open that. And, and this, uh, this seems to work for whatever reason. So here's the classes we're trying to get at Crown Point. Water, rock, grass, forest, scrub, road, and wetland. All right, next thing I'm going to do is go down here and open up our action, load our training samples. And that is going to come from the CP Training 2 shape file. And so here it's just basically loaded that attribute table that I already showed you, but we're in the training manager. So again, here's our three water features. And uh, so our next step is going to be actually to combine these. And we're going to do that using this collapse tool. So we're going to collapse those into a single feature. We're going to collapse the three rock features into a single feature. Collapse grass. Collapse forest. Notice I'm holding down shift to multi-select. Collapse road. Uh, I need to use hold down control to multi-select these two scrubs that are not next to each other. So now I've collapsed uh, into our seven user classes. And I can go ahead and save this as a consolidated uh, shape file, basically. So I'm going to call that CP Training Consolidated. Go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to add that into my project. That doesn't happen automatically. So I got to go over to map, add data, data, and navigate to that again quickly. Here it is, CP training consolidated, the shape file I just made. And that is now on the project. I'm going to turn off my old one, my original one, to avoid confusion. OK, so now what I've done is I've created this consolidated shape file with my training polygons. I'm closing out of the training sample manager. And I'm going to, again, go into uh, highlight the raster that I want to get spectral signatures from, go up to data, and we're going to go back to this create chart spectral profile option. So I'm opening that up again. And this time, instead of manually drawing each of my training areas, we're going to just widen this box a little bit so that we can see all the options on our menu. And we're going to choose this feature selector. And basically, this is just going to let us go in and click on each of our features. So that one I just added was water. Those are my three water features that have been combined. Now again, notice we, we're not able to rename these. There's a glitch where it's not letting us change the label. So we're just going to have to keep track of uh, which is which. So profile one is going to be water. Uh, profile two is going to be scrub brush. Profile three is going to be grass. Profile four is going to be forest. We're going to keep going. Uh, five is going to be wetland. Well, I guess now that's 10 is wetland. <laughs> uh, 11 is rock. And finally, 12 will be road. OK. So I'm going to quickly just change the colors of all these by clicking and changing colors. OK, so I've chosen a suitably horrible color scheme. Maybe you can do better. 
and I'm going to go down and I'm going to enlarge my spectral plot. And here we can see uh, each of our seven user classes. Uh, again, each data point here is the mean for that user class uh, in that band. Notice here we've just got the means plotted and connected by line. If you want to see some more details, you can go to plot type, try boxes and mean lines. This is now going to show us uh, each data point with um, a box representing the interquartile range and whiskers or error bars representing the full min and max. Notice this has now uh, stretched our y-axis to a point where we can't really see the differences between some of these classes. So I'm going to go up here to axis and I'm going to manually rescale the y-axis, let's say between 0 and 3. Okay, so now I can see my separability a little bit better. Also, we can go to general and add a y-axis title, call it band value, and you can add some other titles as well. So with that all done, we can now export our spectral pr profile plot, spectral separability plot, and again, we can just go right here to this export button. You can export it as a graphic or as a table. The table option is pretty neat because what that allows us to do is actually bring the data into Excel. So it saves it as a CSV file. And then you can go right into Excel. And here it is. And when you open it up in Excel, what you get is each of your seven bands. And then for each of your user classes, this is profile one, which recall was water. We have the minimum first quartile, median third quartile, maximum, and the interquartile range here. So you could make a custom plot in Excel, which has a little bit uh, nicer options for plot formatting. Hopefully that's helpful and good luck assessing your spectral separability. Thanks.